At the bottom of the globe, in an area lower than Mount Everest stands tall, adventurers stumbled upon something that no one was actually ready for. 36,000 feet below the ocean floor, the Mariana Trench revealed a finding so strange and disturbing that it could potentially turn everything we believe we know about our world upside down. The burning question now is, are we even prepared to face what's down there? Let's dive in. If this kind of story touches your heart, if you're someone who cares about truth, responsibility, and speaking up for the voiceless, please like this video, subscribe to our channel Spark Science, and share it with someone who should hear it. Let's get started. Deep below the Pacific Ocean lies one of our planet's most enigmatic and extreme environments, the Mariana Trench. Measuring almost 11,000 meters, some 36,000 feet, this giant trench is located east of the Philippines and descends lower than Everest rises above the sea level. For generations, the existence of such a chasm was nothing more than theory, but advancing technology has proven it to be the deepest point in Earth's oceans. To make a journey into this underworld is to leave behind all that is known about life on the surface. The environment within the trench is completely foreign to the human experience. Light from the sun never reaches these depths and the water remains shrouded in perpetual darkness. The temperature drops to freezing point, cooling the surroundings to temperatures so low that only the most highly evolved forms of life can survive. However, the biggest test of all is the overwhelming pressure. On the bottom, it is several hundred times stronger than we find at sea level. If an unprotected human tried to make it to the bottom, the pressure would be fatal within seconds. Only specially designed submersibles, with reinforced hulls and walls a mile thick, can survive such conditions long enough for a human to see the trench in person. To gain more of an appreciation for the descent, it is helpful to break the ocean down into separate zones, each having its own environment and residence. The journey starts in the photic zone, running from the surface to around 200 meters. This is where sunlight filters into the water, producing an intense environment alive with life. Coral reefs, seagrasses, and schools of vibrant fish flourish in this sunny, warm layer. When most people think about the ocean, it is this zone they envision, a world of rich biodiversity and constant movement. Underneath this layer comes the twilight zone, from 200 to about 1,000 meters down. The light declines quickly here, bathing the area with ghostly blue shadows. Pressure increases to ten times that of the surface, and the temperatures continue to fall. The animals in this kingdom must be able to adapt in extraordinary manners. Long, ribbon-like oarfish swim through the darkness silently, while ghostly sea angels float on frilly, wing-like fins. Most Twilight Zone creatures have developed large eyes to scoop up the last remnants of light, or shiny bodies that perfectly match the darkening water. Then there is the Midnight Zone, a world to which no light penetrates. Starting at about 1,000 meters below, it extends into a nearly unimaginable blackness. Bioluminescent creatures, animals that create light for themselves, are the only source of light. Lanternfish, anglerfish, and deep-sea dwellers of many other species employ radiant lures to ensnare prey, avoid predators, or reassure mates. Among the most astonishing residents is the Magna Pinna squid, whose ribbon arms extend up to six meters, gliding elegantly through the black waters. Another strange but tenacious resident is the blobfish, whose jelly-like form is ideally adapted to survive the crushing pressure of this shadow world. And as we go deeper, we reach the abyss, starting at about 4,000 meters below sea level. The temperature of the water is just a little above freezing, and the floor of the ocean becomes vast expanses of soft mud. The terrain is desolate, there is little food, and survival necessitates drastic adaptation. There are many organisms here that live on the limited organic matter that filters down from the top. Although it appears barren, the abyss has its own special life forms that have adapted to live in these inhospitable surroundings. Finally, below depths of 6,000 meters, we find the Hadal Zone, exclusive to deep sea trenches such as the Mariana. This is the most hostile aquatic border on Earth, sculpted by the vast geological forces where tectonic plates clash. Pressure is so extreme that even sophisticated machinery is unable to cope and yet life exists. Scientists have found robust amphipods, which are hardy snailfish, 
and robust microbes that survive where reason dictates that nothing can live. Their presence demonstrates not only life's toughness but its ability to grow in habitats that appear totally alien. But what else is lurking under the bottom mud may radically transform our vision of Earth itself. The seafloor is sometimes pictured as a desolate, barren plain, but it is actually a great repository of natural history and an active platform for incredible processes. Its surface and buried sediment tell the story of the rise and fall of life, the carbon cycle, and the survival of ecosystems in the Earth's most remote regions. One of the most fascinating aspects of the deep ocean is the gradual falling of material called marine snow. This snow is not icy water but a steady rain of organic matter floating down from the surface of the ocean. Daily, millions of tiny pieces, ruins of plankton, fish feces, even an occasional shark's remains, float down. Eventually, they settle on the bottom of the seafloor, creating a soft, powdery mud that buries the carcasses of untold marine generations. In certain areas, such sediments accumulate to mind-boggling depths, more than a kilometer, nearly 3,000 feet, thick. Each layer adds up to create a natural archive, like tree rings or canyon layers, that stores data on ancient climates, oceanic circulation, and life changes over millennia. Such sediments have an important ecological role too, they are vast carbon sinks. Carbon that was once trapped in living things is sealed away in the mud, so it can't quickly come back into the air. By doing this, the seafloor is a key regulator of Earth's climate, not only serving as a passive graveyard but an active stabilizer of planetary processes. One of the most spectacular and infrequent occurrences on the ocean floor is the event of a whale fall. When a giant whale dies and its carcass floats to the sea floor, it turns the desolate landscape into an oasis of life. Such an event is unlikely to happen, but its effect is immense. An empty patch of mud is now suddenly filled with action as life circles in from every direction. The first to arrive are the big scavengers. Sharks, attracted by the smell of death, swim around the carcass and feed on the flesh. Hagfish make their way into cavities, eating the soft tissue from the inside out. This initial wave devours the whale of most of its external layers in short order. But it is just the start. Smaller animals, worms, snails, and other invertebrates, are soon following to eat the leftovers. Grazers patrol the surface, while bacteria infest the nutrient-rich location, decomposing fats and oils sequestered in the bones. These bacteria emit chemicals that support entire microecosystems. The process takes years, sometimes decades. Years after the soft tissue has disappeared, the skeleton remains a home for life. Specialized species, many exclusive to this location, use the bones both as food and shelter. Small worms burrow into the bone tissue, and bacterial mats cover the rest of the surfaces. Gradually, the area develops from a site of frenzied feeding to a calm environment that fosters life until the last vestiges of the whale are assimilated into the seafloor. Why whale falls are so intriguing is the function they play in nature's great recycling process. During life, a whale influences ocean ecosystems by feeding and migrating. At death, it supports a whole food community in an environment where life exists otherwise very little. Thus, the demise of one giant organism begets infinite smaller ones, perpetuating a cycle that has kept the oceans alive for millennia. But still deeper than these extraordinary ecosystems exists Challenger Deep, the lowest point on the Earth, and a place to which explorers are drawn in pursuit of more than science. Challenger Deep's history starts in 1960, when Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh plunged into its depths aboard the Trieste, a pioneering bathyscaphe. It was the first time humans had traveled so unimaginable a depth. The Trieste was an engineering wonder, with heavy steel walls and a pressure-proof globe capable of withstanding the suffocating weight of the deep. It took them almost five hours to descend, and when at last they reached the bottom silted layer, they were the first human observers of the planet's deepest point. Their stay at the bottom was brief, bound by the technology of the time, but their expedition paved the way for a new era of deep-sea discovery. For decades, Challenger Deep was left alone. Its record depth and out-of-the-way location made it a will-o'-the-wisp. 
It wasn't until 2012 that history was marked again. Director and oceanographer James Cameron made a solo dive to the bottom in his specially designed submersible, Deep Sea Challenger. In contrast with earlier missions, Cameron's ship was equipped with sophisticated cameras and scientific gear, so he was able to record the seafloor in unprecedented detail. His dive not only captured video but also returned precious physical samples to be studied by scientists. His feat was remarkable, not just for its technical success but also in that he traveled alone into one of the planet's most extreme environments. A new era of exploration followed over the succeeding years. American explorer Victor Vescovo commanded the limiting factor, a submersible built for repeated dives to great depths. Starting in the late 2010s, Vescovo performed multiple dives into Challenger Deep, systematically recording data, surveying terrain, and taking science samples. His expeditions transcended symbolic benchmarks, making exploration a continuous research endeavor. In contrast to previous vessels, the limiting factor was designed to be durable and capable of withstanding multiple expeditions, a significant improvement over deep-sea technology. With his efforts, Challenger Deep progressed from an unreachably mysterious location to a place of continued scientific exploration.